Hey guys, so the first thing that I want to work on is adding users or registering them. So to do this, we need to set up a table in our database to store them. And how you do this with Typeform is things called entities. So right now in our project under source entity, we already have a single one called user. So we're going to basically start from this and then add on to it. So you can think of each entity is more or less correlates to a table in the database. So right here we have a single table called user or they might slightly change the name maybe to users and we're going to modify this. So here are the columns in our table. The first one is an ID. Now right now it's using a numerical ID that just increments but an ID that I like better these days is a UID. So that means it's going to be of type string and it's just going to be a primary column so like this um, and the reason why I like using this over a numerical ID is because it hides um, the ID and people can't guess it and so what I mean by that is a UU ID if, for those of you that don't know is basically just a random 16-bit um, um, number or it's not a number it's I believe it's 16 um, letter string or something of that sort and uh, as opposed to an ID numerical which goes 1, 2, 3 and so on. So the reason I don't like 1, 2, 3, 4 is people can guess basically the IDs in your tables and they can also know how many items you have in your database. And basically I don't want to give that knowledge to an outsider um, I'd like to hide this and so a UUID does that um, and so we're going to be adding a library to create UUIDs automatically for us whenever we create a user. So the library that I'm going to be adding is called UUID. So I'm just going to copy this. And I'm going to use yarn. So yarn add. And then there's a couple different versions of these that we're going to use or could use. The one we're going to use is the random one, which is version 4. I'm going to copy this and paste it in here. And I'm going to switch this over to import syntax. Now, a few things it doesn't like. If we hover over, we can see. First is we're never using it, so let's first use it. So what I'd like to do is insert a new ID for this user whenever we are about to create it. So there is a, a special function or special um, decorator that we can use from Typeform called the for insert. And we can do, I'm going to call this add ID. So this function can do whatever I want and it's going to be called right before it's inserted into um, the database. So what I'm going to do is say this.id. So this is going to reference the current ID and I'm just going to create a new one for it. So perfect. So now every time we insert a user into the database, this function is going to run before it and it's going to add the ID. So we don't have to actually add the ID when we call the insert function. Uh, this will automatically handle it for us. So next error is it can't find a dec declaration file for the module. So whenever you install a library, um, that's a JavaScript library, it's not going to have definitions and we're using TypeScript. So luckily they have a definition file, um, but what you have to do to install it is do at types slash UUID. And you'll notice I did an uppercase D here uh, to install it as a dev dependency. All right, so that got rid of that error. The next error we're gonna get is submodule import path from this package or disallowed. And this is a TSLint thing. Um, so I'm actually just gonna turn off this rule because we're fine importing from submodules. Um, in this project. So we're just going to say false in our tslint um, config. And then lastly, um, it just says no default import. And so when you get that, you just import it like this. So perfect. All right, so now we are creating an ID for this guy. Um, let's fix these columns right here. Um, I want two columns at least to start with, the email um, and then password. And I'm sure you're probably wondering why we specify like string here. This is actually the TypeScript type of it. So 
when we're using this in TypeScript, we expect its type to be a string. We also need to specify the type we would like this to be in the database. So I want it to be a varchar, and here I can specify as a second parameter any options. So I want to specify the length. I'm going to say it's 255. I think it's like a good amount of size where I don't think um, it will get bigger than that, but we're still giving enough room for users to type whatever password or email that they have. Um, I think it's always good to have a max. Um, even if the max is really good, big, I think that's fine just to make sure there isn't any people, you know, making ginormous um, emails or whatnot. And actually, since we're hashing the password, we don't even have to worry about using um, varchar for this one. We can just use text. Um, I believe, at least there, I think there's, yeah, there's text. Um, and text allows it to be any length, at least in PostgreSQL. So we don't have to worry about the password length because we're using um, hashing in that in here. So we're going to store the hash and not the plain text version or the real thing. And then here, we still want to cap the email so someone doesn't do a super long email. All right, so this is good for our user. There's one last thing. I'm going to say extends base entity. Um, this is a type form thing that's going to give us access to be able to do, for example, I can now do user.create and then just pass in the values to create a user. Um, extending base entity allows us to do that. All right, so this looks good for our database column. Now we're gonna have to actually synchronize our database and we have synchronization to true. So Typeform is gonna automatically do that when it basically starts up um, but we're going to worry about that later. So right now our database is not in the right uh, basically format or doesn't have that table with those columns that we want, but we're going to be syncing that up um, after we do resolvers and then our schema. So I want to go ahead and move the type depths to a separate file. I'm going to call it schema.graphql for now. And I'm choosing to make this a GraphQL um, file to store this stuff for a couple of reasons. One, we get this nice syntax highlighting as opposed to a string. And two, we're going to be using a library that needs it to be in the format of .graphql. And you'll see why what I'm talking about in a little bit. But we can't just now import this schema.graphql file. We have to actually use a library to do this. And the library we're going to be using is called graphql import. So I'm going to go ahead and add this. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to use this import schema function, which allows us to import from .graphql. So let's add that. And we can just copy this bit here. And now we don't actually care about GraphQL tools, so we're going to remove that. OK, so we have the type defs now coming from the .graphql file, which is perfect. And I also want to remove my resolvers to a separate file. So I'm going to create a file called resolvers.typescript. Now I might end up um, doing this in kind of like a folder structure later. But for now, I'm just going to move it here. And it'll be easy to split up later if I want to. And we're just going to import resolvers from dot slash resolvers. Okay, so we split everything up nicely now. Um, we're going to edit the schema and add a new type. So this is going to be a mutation and it's going to be register. So in register, we're going to be taking a few parameters. The first is email and this is required string and then a password, which is also a required string. And then lastly, we're just going to return a boolean, which is going to be true or false, whether we successfully registered that user. All right, so before I actually type out um, the resolvers over here, I want to go over um, a few things. So right now we're specifying, oops, the keyword any here, um, in here for the types. But really, it'd be nice to be able to get the type of these arguments especially because we know what the types are here. So there's a library that actually helps us with that. And it's called GQL to TypeScript. 
So we're going to install this, and what it's going to allow us to do is add the type definitions um, for these functions uh, automatically too. So I'm going to go ahead and install it locally or as a dev dependency. So yarn add dash d um, gql to TypeScript. And then in my package.json, we're actually going to create a script called gen schema types. And what this is going to do is just call this function. So, or not this function, this command line um, utility. And we're going to run this one. So what it does is it takes a schema as the input and it outputs TypeScript. So let's see this guy in action. So my schema is at schema.graphql and the output, I'm going to put this into source and I'm going to create a folder called types. And so I'm going to go into source slash types is going to be at the output graphql.de.ts. And maybe I'm going to call this something else. I'm going to call this schema.typescript. So this way we now have and maybe I'll just say, no, that's fine. I was thinking I might prefix it, but I think I'll just call it schema. All right, let's run this and see what happens. So yarn, and what did I call it? Gen schema types, gen schema types. Um, and if you get this little output here, it means I believe it works. So if we go into types, we can see schema.d.typescript. And here's all the junk. Um, that it gave us. So this might not look super useful and actually I don't even come in and look at this. Here's what I usually do. So now that we have that, what we can do is in our resolvers, um, instead of putting any here, I can actually specify the type of this argument. And what I do is I say GQL and that's the namespace that it uses. And then what I say is I want to get the arguments for hello. So I say I, because it's an interface, and then I just do hello, and then I just auto-complete it. Um, and this is the basically arguments now for hello, and we get them from that type file. So that's perfect. The other thing is I don't want to specify um, any here. So there's this thing called iResolvers. iResolvers from GraphQL Yoga, which um, basically will have all the types, but I've noticed it doesn't always work and we'll see that it's about to break when we add our mutation. So let's add our mutation now for register. So register and again we're gonna have just an underscore and then here are my arguments and this is of the type and let's there we go um, gql dot register and i register and it looks like something is broken because I wanted it to auto-complete for me. I think maybe because I left it empty. Um, I register, there we go. But notice how we have now a little error that pops up. It's not assignable. And I guess the type is not compatible for whatever reason. But it does go ahead and it now knows, for example, I have an email and a password here. So it knows those properties exist on this object, which is crucial. And I can also see this is a string, this is a string um, because of this. So now whenever I add something to my schema, all I'm going to do is I'm going to just run yarn gen schema types. And then in my resolvers, I can then specify the types. And then as far as this thing, I'm basically going to create my own type here. So inside of types, I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to create it. I'll just call it GraphQL utils dot d dot ts and I could just do dot typescript and then export um, this interface and I'm going to call it resolver map and it's going to be a key which is a string and it's going to have an object which can be a key of a string and then here is our function which would have a parent which is any arguments which is any context which we're actually going to be defining later but for now it's going to be empty object because we're not passing any context and then it can return anything from this so basically this is the type of this resolver over here so I'm going to now replace it with resolver map 
and uh, we now have these guys happy everything's happy except for we're not using these and we haven't defined the block so that's what we're going to be doing in the next video is actually filling out the register mutation and put the business logic to actually create the user in the database so that's it for this video guys thanks for watching